The most challenging stage of parenting, the, my least favorite is toddler, by far, my least favorite. I love them when they were home, like when we were all home. Cute as a button, but they're all feet, no brains. I could never relax when I took them out anywhere. I was always watching. I'm a safety nut, so I could never relax. I could never go to a friend's house and relax. What if they had something dangerous out somewhere and my kid got into it? So that was my least favorite age, was the toddler stage. Not when we were home, because I childproofed my whole house. It was easy. It was wonderful. But every time I took them out, I could never socialize or talk to anyone. I was always watching them. So, yeah, it's my least favorite age. Uh, teenagers is my favorite age. Once you know how to parent teenagers and um, get, give respect to get it, uh, it's easy. Should I sign up for classes or private coaching? Okay, here's the thing. A lot of people do both. A lot of, I didn't they see this coming, but when I just made that course about two or three months ago, the big boot camp course, a lot of people start that course, then they realize they want coaching in addition. I would say that course, start with the course, unless you're dealing with something outside of the norm or you're really struggling, then that's coaching. I talk you off the cliff. You know, it's, it's personal, right? So, but if you're just dealing with the standard stuff that you see everyone else dealing with, that would probably just be the course. But I recommend if you're going to do anything, get the behavior board first, check it out. If you like the style on there, then maybe do the course, unless you're dealing with something really challenging or if you just want the one-on-one. -on -one. But you know, the course is really good. Even if you hire me for coaching, a lot of people say they like to have that course. It's like a reference material. It deals with a whole bunch of stuff, sex education, bullying, stuff that you might not even come up against right now, but it's a nice thing to have in your back pocket for reference down the road. Okay. Any tips to keep my cool and not show it annoys me? Not show it annoys me? No, I don't know how to help you with that. That's sort of like, you know, I don't want to be unfair about this. If I knew something, I'd tell you. I really don't. It's like going to Weight Watchers and then saying, can you help me? How do you, how do I not put the potato chips in my mouth? That's kind of your challenge here is to not eat the potato chips and ice cream when you're trying to lose weight and to not show your fear and your pain and your frustration when you're parenting and you're trying to be a leader. That is the hard part here. That is the challenge. I, I never said it was easy, but it's worth it. How do you deal with behavior after a child loses a grandparent who they were very close to? That's a, that's a, um, a slow burn situation. They have to process their grief and you can't rush grief. Can't rush it. Um, they lost who they were with that person. That's what it's, it's not just the death of that person. It's the death of who you were with that person. I've lost both my parents now. My dad, when I was young, and my mom, luckily, she was 93, I was 55. So it's different. But um, it's not tragic at that age, but still sad. But you lose who you are with that person. So your child is not just grieving losing their grandparent. They're grieving losing who they were when that person was around. So you have to allow that process. Be, and I always say, you know, if their behavior's out of whack and all that because of it, you got to meet their needs and manage their wants. You've got to assess, are they acting out because of the grief? And um, yeah, you want to sort of talk to them about that. But yeah, it's, it's just difficult. It's a slow burn. You can't rush grief. Believe me, I wish you could. 